So lately, I've been a massive hater of all the big hitters like Lana Del Rey, Taylor Swift, and Billie Eilish, and I really don't want to be, but it's because I am so fucking jealous and I deserve a record deal. So I'm gonna just go ahead and talk about my music because at any point in time, I could just... My album, The Final Girl, is really a meaningful album. It is a concept album. It has themes. It has messages. It's not just about relationships. It's about society, corruption, war, exploitation, horror movies, true crime, Marvo, gaslighting, SA, victim blaming, accountability. It has cyberpunk elements. It is very post-punk. There are noise music elements. There's campy Lady Gaga, The Who, rock opera elements. It's an entire concept album with multiple layered themes. And if I had the money, you would have an amazing tons of music videos and tons of cool concerts and merch to go with it and it actually deals with everyday societal issues that us regular folks are dealing with songs like haunted and hunted which explores how hard it is to live in a society where you are helpless to really help anyone and you also need help which a lot of us can relate to it has songs like wash your hands which you know, this was written during the whole COVID time and it's exploring how we also partake in the corruption of society. We are our government. It's, you know, it's a philosophical album, but it's also campy, okay? Like, it is fun. Have you guys ever seen Ed Wood? You should, because it's definitely in the vein of like Rocky Horror Picture Show and Ed Wood as well. I am a huge horror film lover. And I'm also a very spiritual, crazy person. Also and obsessed with musicals and Jesus Christ Superstar is like my favorite. So one of my favorite horror movies of all time is Dream Warriors. I've been in the psych ward, so I can actually write about the psych ward because I've actually been in the psych ward. And um, that horror movie takes place in the psych ward. There's a sort of music video um storyboard that i have on my tiktok and on my youtube that you can go check out i love the crow so i made a crow song and i lived in an area at the time that i was recording it and there were a bunch of crows so when i finished the song i went around and i went like ka 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 to try to get the crows to call at me and they didn't call at me then i woke up in the middle of the night to like non-stop cawing it was like ka 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 because I was like walking around and I was like, I just need like a couple sound bites. Like I really only needed like a few like crow calling, like just like almost like 15 seconds of it, right? And I was going around like, caw, 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 and nobody would call at me. And then in the middle of the night, I'm woken up and it's just like non-stop calling. And I have my phone, so I just like go into the GarageBand app and I just hit the record button. I honestly wasn't even sure if that really happened when I woke up again, because I was like, was that some sort of dream? <laughs> and I woke up and I'm like, no, there was actually like just an, a massive amount of, of calling. So I just need everyone to know that in the crow song, when you're hearing the calling noises, those are actual crows that are calling. <laughs> I also wrote this song while I had COVID. I had COVID for three months. Um, I was not vaxxed when I got COVID. And then I ended up being disabled for nine months. And I freaking wrote like so many songs during that time. And people need to know that because that is actually fucking impressive, okay? I was a COVID long hauler and I couldn't even hold a pen to paper at one point. And I produced several songs during that time. And I was also like, I moved to five different locations as well. And I made songs during that time and everyone needs to know that about this album as well. I wrote songs um, about war, but the thing is what I do with my music is I don't just write a simple song about war. I connect it to other things like childhood games and innocence and relationships. And mind you, I'm doing this all on a cell phone, by the way. I'm producing all of this by myself while I am somebody who has no money and knows what it's like to have no food in my fridge, by the way. And I write songs like Entanglement, which is a quantum physics term, but it's also like, oh, how are we entangled in different relationships and how we're entangled in these social structures. So it's called The Final Girl, right? Sounds like it's gonna be straightforward, right? Horror movie themed album, right? Wrong! Because I'm not just singing from the point of view 
of the final girl. Do you realize how fucking genius that is? I don't just sing from the final girl's point of view. But you don't know that right away, do you? Now you do because I told you that, but that's okay because it doesn't take away from the album that you know that this album is going to be changing different views. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? Oh, because everything that I do is meaningful and purposeful when it comes to this fucking album and I put so much fucking thought and soul and heart into this. And the reason I did this is because of Darvo. Because maybe then you can understand how hard it is to be a survivor and constantly be given the villain treatment. So we're told that we shouldn't play the victim anymore, right? Well, congratulations, here's an entire album where I take accountability and I let you know that I am the fucking bad guy. As the final girl, I am actually the bad guy all along, right? Because I'm not just the final girl in this album, I am everything, and I am responsible for everything. You see the joke in that? You see how fucking like genius that is? Great, good, that's in the album, it's amazing, you should listen to it. Because the reality of being a survivor is that you have to fight so hard to not be the person. It's a really vulnerable and it's a real raw album and it comes from just, I mean, it's my soul. But there's songs that you can dance to and there's songs that celebrate friendship, like that's very um, My Chemical Romance and you know, it's okay to be cringe. We are the weirdos they warned you about. And, you know, it talks about that in the album too because it's not enough to just survive. None of us can survive on our own, again, with entanglement. And there's songs that talk about friendship and think of the movie It where they all work together to fight the evil, right? Well, there's songs like that on the album, multiple songs. And there's a water theme and there's a flower theme because it's getting tied together with the final girl, which is about rebirth. It's about survival. And it's about expressing your emotions. And, and when we think of emotions, a lot of times, in a, especially in spirituality, it's connected with water, right? Because we cry. And water and crying, all of this is an important aspect of life because what happens when it rains? Flowers bloom. So that's a huge part of the theme of of the album. It's, it's not just like, oh, I'm just going to write a uh, final girl album and it'll just have one note to it. No. And it doesn't have one note sonically too. There's a lot of different sonical elements and it's new sounding. It's not anything you've ever heard before. It's genre blending. It's genre redefining really. Other thing you need to know about how I make my music is that my instrumentals are telling a story. I don't just put lyrics to some fucking beat. No, the beat itself are the lyrics. The beat itself is the poetry. So when I go into that GarageBand app and I'm like, hmm, this is a desert theme song, you know I'm gonna be looking at what the desert theme options are available to me. You know that I'm gonna be thinking, hmm, what sounds like a desert? What sounds like rain? How can I incorporate like a rain sound? Like that's what I have been doing with this album. And guess what? A lot of these people aren't fucking doing it and they have a team of people and, and to, to help them with this and they're not even, they're not even taking into consideration. Because I do, I, you know, and the way that I arranged it as well, like you have heavy songs, but then you also have light songs and that's very, it's, it's mindful because that's part of survival too. You need to feel what you need to feel, but you also need to celebrate life as well. And my album does that. And I wanna say about, um, also, while I was writing this, I, I, I lost people in my life and I wrote about it. And I also want to say that my song Winchester, you know, I sing, I'm not trying to be a white man. But if you listen to the song, it's, you know, I don't like how our veterans of war are treated. And that's really what that song is about. It's, um, so yeah, I, I also want to say that because I know that you, you never know what's gonna happen in life and I, I, I put so much of myself into this and I, I, I don't know if, you know, but I, I want people to understand these aspects of what, what I did. I might do a part two because honestly, it's gonna be a 44 song album and in case you haven't known noticed by the nine minutes that I put in so far, I put in a lot of thought into this. And that's why I am fucking such a hater right now because I, I don't actually feel like a lot of these pop stars are, are doing that. And um, yeah, I, yeah, I hope that 
you guys listen to the album and I hope you give it a real fucking chance and actually like listen past the first four or five songs because yeah again it's not easy to produce your own music it's really fucking not and I have no education